This here is the nine point circle for a triangle, or the Euler circle. It passes through these nine really special points marked in red. Now we'll break this down and we'll prove that this circle exists. So we have a triangle. And this is its orthocenter. So this is an altitude, this is an altitude, and this is an altitude. This, this, and this point are the feet of the altitudes, and the Euler circle passes through them. This point here is the midpoint of the segment defined by this point and the orthocenter. So this length equals this length. This point is analogously defined as the midpoint of this segment, and this point is analogously defined as the midpoint of this segment. These three points also lie on the Euler circle. This point, this point, and this point are the midpoints of the sides of the triangle, and they also lie on the Euler circle. Now let's prove that this circle exists. First, let's prove that this quadrilateral, marked in blue, is cyclic. I'm gonna denote the angles of the large triangle by alpha, beta, and gamma. We know that this here is a right-angled triangle, and therefore the median to the hypotenuse equals half of the hypotenuse, so this equals this equals this. Therefore, this triangle is isosceles. Furthermore, if this angle is alpha, then because this angle is 90, then this angle here must be 90 minus alpha. In this isosceles triangle, we know that this angle here is 90 minus alpha also. And now notice that this here is a mid-segment in the large triangle, because this is the midpoint of this side, and this is the midpoint of this side. Therefore, this is parallel to this. And because this is an altitude in the triangle, so we have a 90 degrees here, then because of the parallel lines, this here must also be 90 degrees. Therefore, this line is the angle bisector altitude and median in this triangle here. And therefore, this angle equals alpha, and this angle equals alpha. We also have that this here is a mid-segment, again in the large triangle, because of the two midpoints of the two sides, and therefore this is parallel to this. And hence, if we have an angle alpha here, we must also have an angle alpha here. And so this angle is 180 minus alpha, which means that the sum of this angle and this angle is 180, meaning that this quadrilateral is cyclic. Now take a look at what we did. We took the circumcircle of the triangle defined by the three midpoints of the triangle sides, and we proved that one of the feet of the altitudes in the triangle lies on that circumcircle. And therefore, by symmetry of argument, this point also lies on that circumcircle, and this point also lies on the circumcircle, because there's nothing special about this foot of the altitude. We could have proven the same thing in the same way for this foot of the altitude and this foot of the altitude as well. Now that we've proven that this hexagon is cyclic, then let's add this point, this point, and this point to that circle. We know that if this angle is alpha, because this angle is 90 degrees, then this angle must be 90 minus alpha. Notice that this here is a mid-segment in this triangle, because this is a midpoint of this side, and this is a midpoint of this side. Therefore, this is parallel to this. And if this angle is 90 minus alpha, then this angle must also be 90 minus alpha. Now take a look at this quadrilateral. It is cyclic because this is a 90 degrees, and this is a 90 degrees angle. And therefore, this angle, 90 minus alpha, equals this angle, 90 minus alpha. And now, it follows that this quadrilateral is cyclic because this angle, 90 minus alpha, equals this angle, 90 minus alpha. And therefore, this point lies on the circumcircle of this triangle, which is exactly the Euler circle that passes through these six points. Therefore, this point lies on the Euler circle. By symmetry of argument, we could have shown in the same way that this point and this point also lie on this circle. And now we know that these nine points all lie on one circle, the nine-point circle for this triangle. Now let's try to find its center. Suppose this is the center of the 9-point circle, then we know that this equals this equals the radius of the circle, therefore this point lies on the perpendicular bisector of this segment here. Similarly, it lies on the perpendicular bisector of this segment, and on the perpendicular bisector of this segment. So let's construct them. In green I've marked the three perpendicular bisectors, so we know that the angles here are 90 degrees, and we know that this length equals this length, this length equals this length, and this length equals this length. Now let's construct the symmetric point of the orthocenter with respect to the center of the Euler circle. It is a point for which this length equals this length. Now I'm gonna construct this line here to be perpendicular to this line, so we have 90 degrees, and then this point to be symmetric to this point, the orthocenter, with respect to this foot of the perpendicular, so we have this equals this. First of all, let's notice that this length equals this length, and it equals this length because this here is a rectangle, and, by definition, it equals this length. Therefore, in this quadrilateral, we have that this side is parallel to this side, and this side is equal in length to this side. Therefore, it's a parallelogram. But it has two angles of 90 degrees here and here, and so it must be a rectangle. 
Therefore, this angle here is 90 degrees, and this angle here is 90 degrees. And now consider this triangle. This is the midpoint of this side, and this is the midpoint of this side. Therefore, this is a mid-segment in this triangle. And so we have that this is parallel to this. But we have a 90 degrees angle here. Therefore, we have a 90 degrees angle also here. And now that we know that this angle is 90 and this angle is 90, we can conclude that this point, this point, and this point lie on a straight line. In conclusion, we got that the symmetric point of the orthocenter with respect to the center of the Euler circle, so this point, lies on the perpendicular bisector of this side of the triangle, because this is a midpoint of the side and this is 90 degrees angle here. Analogously, we can show that this point also lies on the perpendicular bisector of this side and the perpendicular bisector of this side. And therefore, this point is the circumcenter of the large triangle, the center of its circumcircle, which means that we found where the center of the Euler circle is located. It's the midpoint of the segment defined by the orthocenter and the circumcenter in a triangle. Now let's try to find its radius. So note that the Euler circle is the circumcircle of this triangle given by the three midpoints of the three sides of the triangle. Its three sides are the mid-segments in the triangle. And so this has length half of this, this has length half of this, and this has length half of this. Furthermore, this angle is alpha as this one, this angle is beta as this one, and this angle is gamma as this one. And therefore, this triangle is a small copy of the large triangle scaled by a factor of one half, and therefore its circumradius is half of the circumradius of the large triangle. And so the radius of the Euler circle is r divided by 2, where r is the radius of the circumcircle of the large triangle. This is the optional problem. We have a triangle, and the three midpoints of the three sides are taken, and then this line, this line, and this line get intersected with this line, this line, and this line at these points. This is an altitude in this triangle, this here is an altitude in this triangle, and this is an altitude in this triangle. This point is the symmetric point of this one with respect to this one, so this segment equals this segment. Similarly, this point is symmetric to this point with respect to this point, so this equals this, and this point is symmetric to this point with respect to this point, so this equals this. We need to prove that the six red points on the picture lie on the same circle. And here's the solution. First of all, notice that this, this, and this are the three mid-segments in the large triangle. And so, this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle, because of the parallel lines, this parallel to this, this parallel to this, and this parallel to this. We have that this here is a parallelogram. This is the intersection point of the diagonals of the parallelogram. Therefore, this equals this, but we have that this equals this. Therefore, this length equals this length. From the mid-segment and from the parallelogram, we know that this length equals this length, and so this triangle is congruent to this triangle here, because this length equals this length, this length equals this length, and the angle between the two equal sides is also equal. Therefore, this angle here must be 90 degrees. Similarly, for this point and this point, we know that this is 90 degrees, and this is 90 degrees. Let's not forget that because of the mid-segments, this is a parallelogram. Therefore, this length equals this length, or this point is the midpoint of this side. And similarly, this here is a parallelogram, and so this point is the midpoint of this side. And therefore, the six points that we need to prove lie on the same circle are actually the three midpoints of the sides of this triangle, and the feet of the altitudes in this same triangle. And we know that these six points lie on the Euler circle for this triangle.